What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I have a subscriber story that honestly, as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to share it. It's about this guy who lived in an apartment complex and one of his neighbors ended up getting evicted because, you know, he was a very large gamer and just refused to clean up his room. To the point where his entire apartment smelt horrible and the landlord came in and like told him he had to clean it or get kicked out. I don't know how you let it get that bad, all I will say is it probably wasn't very fun to live next to the dude, so uh, yeah, I figured I would share the story time and that's what we're gonna be doing today, so without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy, and press the like button, otherwise you're gonna get a neighbor like this, and trust me, that wouldn't be too fun. Alright, so the person who sent this in, I guess, had originally moved into their, like, a college apartment slash dorm room situation. For those of you that don't know, a dorm room is basically just a fancy word for you're gonna give us more money to live in an apartment building on campus. And, you know, when you go from living in a house to living in an apartment building or a complex like that, it's a little bit different. You can't really be too loud. You're very aware of your neighbors and what they're doing, and chances are you're gonna hear stuff you wish you didn't hear from other people's rooms. And it just is what it is. There's not too much that you can do about it. But in particular, the guy that lived underneath the person who sent this in was uh, a little bit more of a nuisance than they could even handle, dude. Almost instantly, as soon as they moved in, they heard, like, screaming from the apartment underneath them to the point where it sounded like someone was, like, in a physical altercation or being threatened. And so, obviously, just being the type of people that want to help out, they call the building security, let them know that it sounds like there's a fight going on in the apartment underneath them. They hear someone go knock the door open, and then they hear the guy who was screaming start screaming at the security guard that he's interrupting his StarCraft game and he needs to get out of here because he's trying to game right now and it's ridiculous that he would be here. And he's screaming this so loud that they can make out what he's saying from the floor above them. That just goes to show how loud this dude is. And so obviously they hear the door slam, you know, him go back to his computer, they hear him stomping. From underneath them, once again, impressive levels of loudness. And he sits down and he goes back to his game screaming almost immediately. And here's the thing that makes no sense to me, right? So, the person who sent this in isn't a giant gamer. StarCraft isn't really a game that, like, yelling and being loud with makes much sense on. From what I understand, it's a 1v1 strategy game. I don't think your opponent can hear you screaming like a banshee. So if you're playing a game like that and you're just being so loud that you're interrupting your neighbors all the time, all it's doing is making you look bad, bro. You're not intimidating your enemies, you're not getting the upper hand. You're literally just being obnoxious. So the dorm, the apartment that the subscriber's in obviously is like, all right, this guy's gonna be annoying. Not much is gonna change over the course of the year. Chances are this guy's always just gonna act a little bit like this. But whatever, as I said, when you move into a place where people are close like that, it's gonna be loud, you're gonna hear your neighbors, there really is not that much that you can really do about it. But yelling is one thing, what started to happen after that is every day without fail they would hear him screaming and yelling, that was a mainstay. Like no matter what, homie was raging at his games at least once a day, but they could deal with that. What really started to make this even more unbearable is the fact that apparently this dude along with screaming at his games was screaming at every piece of trash to like, you know, not leave his room. Not seriously, but it became very, very evident that, you know, someone in the dorm was not taking their trash out and their room was starting to smell awful. It started from the rooms next to the gamer guys' rooms. They kind of, at a meeting one night, mentioned that there was a really weird smell and they didn't know what to do and it was pretty nasty. So, obviously, at that point... Nobody assumed that it was just the stench of, like, a person's garbage. So they end up calling the plumbers out, checking all the pipes, doing all that stuff, and the plumbers almost instantly go, no, it's not coming from the pipes, I think it's coming from that room. And they're pointing at the gamer's room. And obviously, like, the RA, the person in charge of kind of running it when, when the people who own the building aren't there, which is the universe, you guys know what I'm saying, is like, oh, well, there's no way it's him. Like, if we're having all these rooms complain about the smell, there's no way it would just be one person. That would be almost impossible. They'd have to be, like, living in a dump as a joke. Well, the only problem is I guess Homeboy was living in a dump because the smell continued to get worse. The plumbers left, but the neighbors next to this guy's room ended up getting so bad that they started requesting to be moved elsewhere because the stench was just that bad. And on top of that, the subscriber that sent this in was above him. They started to smell how bad this dude's room was. Like, if your stench starts to go through the floor into people above you's room, that means that you basically have to be living in a landfill. 
I grew up, you know, my Oma was in condos a lot. So, like, I, I know what it's like to be near people. If you can smell your neighbors, their smell has to be incredibly strong. So at that point, everyone's complaining about the stench, complaining about all of this. So the RA, who really can't do anything about it, ends up going to the university and getting, like, her overhead landlord lady. The lady in charge of the entire building to come take a look at it and just see what the situation is. Because she can't figure it out. People are complaining, asking to get moved. It's a whole thing at this point, right? Anyways, it just so happens that the subscriber is walking down this floor. He was going to hang out with a friend when they go to do this dude's room inspection. And so he's kind of walking by and the lady who's in charge of the building and a couple of the workers open the door. And from the second they open the door, two of the workers turn around and are literally retching, dry heaving, trying not to vomit in the middle of the hallway because this dude's room smelt that bad. And like... The door opened and the smell rushed into the hallway. Even the subscriber who set this in got a whiff of it and said it smelt kind of like a raccoon had died in his trash and he just never took it out. And so the door is open now, right? And the smell comes out and people are overwhelmed so they're not looking. And then the subscriber turns and looks into the room. And the way that the rooms are laid out is you would look down the hallway, there's a bathroom to the right, and then there was two rooms. Well, he didn't have a roommate, the gamer guy, you know, thankfully he probably would have killed this dude with toxic fumes. But the windows are shut. Like, there's supposed to be windows when you look in through the door at the other end. And he has put blankets over the windows so absolutely no light gets in, dude. This guy is straight up in vampire mode. Listen, I think everyone's been in a mood where, like, you've locked all the doors, you know, you close the windows for two days and you game. Maybe not lock the doors, but you get what I'm saying. Everyone's gone cave mode before and, like, locked themselves in their room for a bit to game. I don't think anyone is thinking that's necessarily weird. But it's been months at this point, and this dude has blocked out the sunlight permanently. Like, he's literally living like a vampire, dude. This guy must have been whiter than Elmer's glue. Just absolutely no sunlight for that long. Your skin's got to be, like, translucent, man. I feel like a flashlight could have given him a sunburn at this point. Anyways, they can't see very much. There's one light on, though. And from the light that they see, it's just a mountain of garbage. Sometimes it's garbage bags just full of stuff. A lot of the times, though, it looks like there's just garbage on the floor. And the longer they're looking at it, the more it kind of comes into view. And at one point, he looks and he sees just this tower of pizza boxes stacked up probably about seven and a half, eight feet tall. And the worst part is he can see stuff moving on the pizza boxes. And I'm going to assume it's cockroaches. Obviously, he didn't get closer. But it really looked like this dude would just eat like half a pizza from the lunchroom, bring it back the other half, and then set it on the ground and stack up the boxes. But he never took it out. So all that cheese pizza had just been sitting there rotting in those boxes for who knows how long. Probably most of the school year while this dude was just gaming away. And here's the thing, bro. Like, listen, everyone's not cleaned their room before. My room's gotten pretty gross. I won't even lie. There was one time I, a cup fell under my bed, like a G Fuel cup that was sealed, and I forgot about it, and it grew something. Really embarrassing. That being said, dude, I've never let it get so bad where, like, cockroaches are running around my pizza boxes like there's no tomorrow. And they're just, like, infesting me, dude. Homie probably got to cuddle with a rat before he went to bed. And trust me, ratatouille is not real. Hate to break it to you, dog, but chances are you're not learning how to cook from a rat. I just don't know how people let it get that bad, dude. Like, boxes of pizza. Moldy cheese doesn't smell good. Not that I've really smelt a bunch of it, but I can tell you right now it doesn't smell good. How do you just let boxes and boxes of moldy cheese sit under your nose and not do anything about it? Like, at what point was he just sitting there in this rotting cesspool of garbage and was like, meh, cleaning it just seems at this point a little bit stupid. Why would I even bother wasting my time? It's like, I don't know, man, maybe you want to waste your time so that way you're not living in filth. They, there's, they can't be good for your health either, dude. If you're a real gamer, you would know that it's all about making sure that you have the highest health points possible. And I don't think your health points go up from living in filth. Anyways, obviously the workers, the subscriber, everybody is just in pure shock at what they see because nobody was expecting it to be that bad. And then the lady who's like in charge of the building goes, well, I guess that's where the smell's coming from. You know, the only lady who didn't puke, by the way, was her. I just want to know what type of stuff she's seen where like that smell doesn't make you start dry heaving, you know? 
I guess if you're in charge of college dorm rooms, you probably are used to seeing just the absolute most nasty things you could ever imagine. But still, the fact that this lady just took it on the chin, this guy's leaning tower of literal pizza, you gotta give her a little bit of credit. Alright guys, I'm gonna interrupt the video for just one second. If you take a look at your screen now, you'll see a gift card code. For those of you that don't know, I give one of these away in every single video I post here on this channel as a way to say thank you to you guys for subscribing and turning on those notifications. So if you haven't already, you should do that, and you should take a second to press the like button. If you already do, then you're an absolute G, and I'll shut up and get back to the video. Thanks. Anyways, obviously at that point, the workers like go in and start cleaning out this stuff because they can't just leave it there and they probably have somewhere in a contract somebody signed the right to do it. Anyways, the subscriber just goes to the uh, person's room who's a couple doors down and he can still smell it a little bit in there, but it's not as strong. And they start talking, hanging out, and they can hear the people like dry heaving, cleaning out this apartment setup uh, a, a little bit down, right? And then they hear what sounds like the gamer dude coming back to the people in his room just emptying out his stuff. And they know he's back because the screaming starts, what are you doing? Don't touch my stuff. You have no right to do that. This is my property. You can't do anything about this. And at that point, the subscriber and the person they're hanging out with want to hear the rest of this go down. They don't want to be cut out of the juiciest part of the tea. So they go and they open the door to the hallway just to crack so they can't really see it's open, but they can hear better. And they're hearing this dude screaming about how he's going to press charges for them for breaking into his room and, you know, how they just have no right to be in this place whatsoever and they need to leave immediately. And the landlady is really not having any of it. She's like, you can't have your apartment in this state. We gave you multiple written warnings. We mailed them to you. We hand delivered them to you saying that you had to like get this place in a better state. So, no, you, you don't just get to pretend that, like, this is a surprise to you. The fact that we had plumbers out here, we tried to say that it wasn't you, you know what I mean? Like, we really gave you every benefit of the doubt, so no, you're not gonna sit here now and say that you're staying. You need to go, we're cleaning this out now, and you have, like, two days to find somewhere else to live, or 48 hours. Well, I, don't, I don't know exactly how she said it. So, obviously, this guy is pretty upset, and he starts screaming about how this is unfair, this is unfair, this is unfair, but then something happens that really, really makes him upset. I guess one of the guys that was cleaning out his room, they had gotten a lot of the trash out, they started, like, bringing his stuff into the hall, and at this point, the subscriber has his head in the hallway, and he goes, Don't touch my computer! Don't touch my computer! And he's bringing out this gaming PC, it's got tempered glass on one side, it looks like a pretty nice computer. And he sets it down so the tempered glass side is facing th where they're looking from. And he's freaking out about, don't touch my computer, and he, like, goes over as soon as the guy puts it on the ground and starts, like, looking at it, right? And he takes the glass panel off. And I don't know why he took the glass panel off, but in his computer, dude, cockroaches start running out from inside the computer onto the floor. And obviously the landlady's like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? They start snopping like crazy. But this dude was living in such filth that his gaming computer had become a den for cockroaches, bro. How do you not notice that? He had tempered glass on it. He was probably looking at that thing every day, bro. He probably thought it was like a little ant farm thing, you know, the little ecosystems that they have. The only difference is instead of it actually being like an ecosystem of something non-invasive, it's just the creatures that live in like dumpsters, you know, and they're eating his, his pizza addiction that he has molding in the background. Regardless, they're taking this stuff out of the hallway as fast as possible because it's literally stinking up the entire hallway. People that were coming home from classes that enter the hallway are dry heaving as they have to walk by it because the smell is just that bad. There was that much just rotting garbage in this dude's room. So obviously this is dramatically embarrassing, but the guy has no shame about it. The entire time he's yelling at them that they have no right to do this and his parents are going to get him back into this dorm room. Just you wait and see. I don't know where the confidence was coming from. I've got a pretty good feeling that the uh, university has good grounds to ban you from housing if you turn one of their like dorm rooms into a bio lab. Not even on purpose. You weren't even doing experiments. You just, like, accidentally contaminated enough cockroaches with gross stuff that they're going to become the Teenage Mutant Ninja Cockroaches instead. Like, instead of primordial ooze falling onto a batch of turtles, it's just a batch of turtles that grew up in this guy's room drinking Mountain Dew and, like, eating nothing but Doritos. But the guy was not shamed at all. You would think, like, watching people literally dry heave as they smell your room would make you embarrassed, but he just kept arguing with them. And sure enough, after they had gotten all their stuff out there, they were like, you can go back in your room, but you can't take the computer because it's infested, right? They were like, no, you're just going to cause a problem. So he says, well, I need it for school, blah, 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 blah. They argue about it. And finally, he's like, well, okay, what if I use my computer, like, outside? 
And at that point, this guy was so relentlessly stubborn that they were like, fine, whatever. But in 48 hours, you have to find somewhere to live. And he's like, yeah, sure. My mom and dad are going to fix this. Don't even worry about it. And he goes outside, like outside the building and sets up his computer and like starts looking for another place to live. And I guess while he was outside, you know, this wasn't from the subscriber, but another one of his doormates had come home. He had like been on the phone with his mom and they were talking about their legal options to make him be not kicked out. And somewhere in between that phone call and the end of the night, he picks up his computer and brings it back into his room. And they know that because they can hear him screaming at video games again underneath them. So I guess, you know, something with his parents had made him think that he wasn't actually going to get kicked out. Like they weren't going to have the ability to evict him. I, I don't know why they thought that, but obviously... For the next two days, they're listening to this guy still rage at video games. He doesn't seem too concerned about anything. If anything, it seems like he literally got back to normal. What's wild about this is like, when was this dude going to classes? If he was spending this much time just screaming at video games, his grades had to have looked atrocious. His parents wouldn't have been so stoked about him living like this if they found out they were paying 30 grand a year for him to fail everything. But anyways, after 48 hours, obviously, uh, they go to their one friend's dorm so they can watch the finale of the show. I know you guys think it's a little mean, but let's be honest, you probably do the same thing. So they're all crowded in like the entryway of this one friend's dorm with the door cracked to watch it. And sure enough, two school police officers show up with a notice of eviction. You know, they're here to do their thing. They knock on the door and surprisingly the kid answers and he answers and he goes, yeah, I just don't want to go. So if you guys can do this another time, that would be great. I don't know why he thought that was going to work, bro, but imagine doing that. They're like, hey, you have to leave right now, and you just go, meh, I don't want to. Like, oh, well, in that case, sir, you have a great day. Tip of the hat. They're just going to turn around and walk away. Obviously, the police are like, you don't really have much of a choice. And so they kind of tell him that he has to get his stuff and go now. And he starts to argue with them a little bit. He gives them a little bit of like, I don't want to. But they're like, okay, that sucks. We don't really care if you want to. You have to. So reluctantly, he gets his mom on the phone, and the mom is kind of trying to her best to care in the cops, but like a nice Karen approach. Instead of just screaming at them, calling them idiots, she starts talking about how, you know, the RA and the people in charge of the dorm are out to get her son, and blah, 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 and the cops really aren't having it. They're like, yeah, well, you guys can figure that out with the school. We just have an order to get him out, so we're going to do that. And the mom finally tells her son to start packing up all of his stuff. So he gets his, like, computer and his one suitcase, and he starts carrying it out. And they walk past the door that the people are sitting in watching the finale from. And as they're walking by, they get a better look at the um, computer. And now, not only is there cockroaches in there, they didn't really get a good look before. But they can see, like, where the power supply was. They can see what looks like a rat's nest, too. So, obviously, no rats had scampered out of the computer. But it's a strong possibility that this dude was so gross that he had literally had rats living in his computer by the power supply area. You gotta give kudos to the rat for not getting shocked, though, bro. That thing's gotta be a little electrical engineer to be living near a power supply and not get fried every 10 seconds. He was obviously whining with the cops, who like, didn't put up much of a fight, obviously. I mean, hopefully, because he knew he couldn't. Could you imagine, like, the state of this dude, bro? He probably was not in the best physical condition, and uh, him trying to fight two people to make sure he can keep his little gaming cave. After he was evicted, though, they brought in, like, a crazy cleaning crew. Like, the type of cleaning crew where people are wearing suits and stuff. And uh, come to find out, they had one friend that worked for, like, the, the housing company thing. Like, the people in charge of housing, university housing. And they told them that, like, because of the state of the room and all the, the rotting food and the mouse droppings and all that stuff, they literally had to have called in, like, a chemical cleaning crew because it would have been a biohazard to have people just go in normally with no protection. And honestly, man, that's how you know you just let things go too far. If after you move out, they have to call in a biohazard cleaning crew, then, like, ah, man... You, you gotta work on the personal hygiene thing. No one should want to have to have a little Fukushima nuclear zone around where they used to live, dude. Imagine it being that bad. We're like, how did you place that phone call? Yeah, we had a tenant that was so gross that we're gonna need your crime scene cleanup crew immediately because it's just awful. I hope they get good tips, bro. I feel like the people that clean that stuff have to get paid well. Because if they're not, then they're just not doing it, dude. Like, I'm not doing that for minimum wage. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully none of you guys are living like this, dude. A little bit of desk mess is all right. But, you know, if you start having biohazards in your room, then just clean it, dog. It's okay. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. If you don't know what to comment, just go ahead and comment the word Swiffer down below so at least I know you're clean. Because, you know, if you don't know what a Swiffer is, then uh, my goodness.
Other than that, guys, you can check out the intro song linked down below, along with a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast, in the description. And other than that, if y'all are fans of G Fuel, I got good news for you. Using code SCRUBBY at the checkout gets you a discount on G Fuel, so go ahead and do that. And as y'all are aware of, it is now October, which means Halloween is coming up. And as you can tell from what's on your screen right now, we got the Halloween merch that is out. I'll put the link to this at the top of the description, but you should definitely go get it if you can. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, I think that'll do it for the video. Don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot. And hopefully I'll see you guys all next time with another video. I'm out. Peace.